doesn't pay attention to human beings. With the fire of the heart of Jesus and the power of his love, I could work endlessly on being good so that all those who need help and mercy in my family and in my neighborhood huh? may be relieved and enlightened by my endeavor. <laughs> to I just whoever said... could say that God doesn't care about my marriage nor my family, with the fire of the heart of Jesus and the power of his love, I could give the best evidence possible of my faith and show how much the Lord gives meaning and direction to my life and testify how he will do the same to whoever will follow him in the path leading to the joy and comfort of being taken care by his grace. To whoever says God is nothing but a pipe dream, with the fire of the heart of Jesus and the power of his love, I could make every endeavor to radiate the joy, the hope in front of problems, and the charity that comes from the grace of the divine power of his love in my own heart, in every member of my family, and in the life of all those who surround me. I would then have understood the true meaning of the burning heart of Jesus, the extraordinary power emerging from this furnace of love, inviting me to radiate his life and love and joy in my life, my family, and to all people. Looking to Jesus, presenting commitment to marriage as a path to joy. Now let's listen to these three couples as they open up their hearts and their lives and their family experience to share with us. Ron and Mavis from Australia, please come. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. 59 years ago, before the altar and our family and friends, we committed ourselves to love each other no matter what for the rest of our lives. We had no idea what life might throw at us. All we knew was we wanted to face it together. We soon found that our relationship was more complex than we'd ever imagined. Sometimes we felt very much apart wondering, could this be the beginning of the end? Yet by God's grace, here we are, still very much in love. On our long path with the inevitable cycles of romance, hurt, forgiveness and joy, we look to Jesus and his example of total self-giving. Scripture and the other sacraments keep us grounded in our faith and we find strength in praying as a couple the witness of couples in the lay spirituality movements, a keep Notre Dame and worldwide marriage encounter, greatly influence us. And, and dedicated singles and celibate priests and religious give us valuable insights into marriage. And now we learn from our children as they speak the gospel back to us. And from our journey, we'd like to offer three points. Firstly, our sacrament of marriage calls us to be intentional couples. By intentional, we mean prioritizing our relationship, not drifting at the whim of feelings and life's pressures. It means a committed lifestyle, like an athlete intentionally training for a goal, developing habits of caring, listening, forgiving, making time for each other, and keeping romance alive. Through intentional daily yeses, we continue to confer the sacrament of marriage on each other, it's a path to holiness. Being intentional couples is not just for ourselves, but for others. Marriage is a vocation, a missionary way of life that flows out to children and extended family, to our parishes and wider church, indeed all society. 
Jesus tells us to love one another as he loves us so that our joy be complete. Commitment to grow in love brings many joys, such as the gift of still being loved despite one's failings, a confidence based on mutual trust, gratitude on seeing the, seeing the God's, God's goodness in the other person, and the wonder of falling in love many times, but always with the same person. There is the blessing of grandparenting and friendship and enriching intimacy that comes from the lifelong commitment in marriage. In all this, the cross is always with us, but when challenges arise, there is reassurance in facing it together. Our second point is that in marriage, our sexuality is central to our spirituality. Marriage is a sexual sacrament. We come to our spirituality through our sexuality, not despite it. In fact, the one distinguishing feature between our sacramental relationship and that of all other good Christian relationships is sexual intimacy. Obviously, it's not the only expression of the sacrament, but in sexual union, the total giving of self between man and woman becomes the fullest expression of the sacrament of marriage. It's a means of lifelong bonding and a source of great joy, an experience of gender diversity unlike any other. As Pope Francis says in Amoris Laetitia, sexual union, lovingly experienced and sanctified by the sacrament, is in turn a path of growth in the life of grace of the couple. It is the nuptial mystery. Growth often comes from facing challenges. In, in our journey, we experienced a path of growth through following the teachings in Humanae Vitae, admittedly at first out of obedience rather than conviction. But we came to appreciate that love could actually grow through the other-centeredness inherent in periodic abstinence. Working on it together made us more sensitive to each other. It helped us recognize the preciousness of God's gift of sexuality in our relationship and the awesome blessing of new life. We acknowledge the widespread resistance and sensitivities around Humanae Vitae. However, we believe that a greater appreciation of the spirituality of sexuality is a path to truths offered in this teaching. Our third point is that the wider church needs to learn from the, more from the domestic church. Amoris Laetitia tells us that the church, in order to fully understand her mystery, looks to the Christian family, which manifests her in a real way. And as St. John Paul II repeatedly said, the, f the family is a major agent of evangelization. The church's challenge is to present truth with compassion and mercy in the complexities of human relationships. This highlights the inherent tension in the call for accompaniment with discernment that pervades, pervades Amoris Laetitia, walking lovingly with others, listening with the heart, but importantly, offering an alternative pathway towards wholeness in the truth. This tension is one that married couples in the messiness of family life face daily, responding as best they can with welcome, acceptance, and love. We think of the parents saddened by the cohabiting son or daughter, trying to see with the eyes of Jesus the good that is there as they continue to reach out in love. We think of the couple with the pregnant single daughter, welcomed home to help celebrate new life and care for the new grandchild. Or the parents with a gay son who knows that the door is always open to the church of the home. In this, we can look to Jesus and the way he welcomed sinners while always leading to the truth. Accompaniment is hard and parents struggle with this, but they do find ways of bringing Christ's love to the persons that the Lord has put into their lives. Learning more from our domestic churches, 
could be part of the change in mentality advocated by Pope Benedict XVI on the need for the laity to be not just collaborators with the clergy, but co-responsible for the life and mission of the church. In conclusion, Amoris Laetitia reminds us that in a society of growing loneliness, gendered confusion, and loss of hope, marriage remains the basic community of love and life and offers a radical sign of hope for society. We need a renaissance of marriage, a confident proclamation of the truth, as witnessed by the lives of committed, loving couples, that God's plan is deeply fulfilling, attainable, and a path to joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mavis and Ron. Thank you. You're very courageous Thank you. to share with us. Thank you. And now, join your hands to welcome our couple, desde los Estados Unidos de México, José Luis y Verónica. Bienvenidos. Buenos días, good morning. We go, both come from a very large families. Jose Luis has 13 brothers and sisters, Anna and me, a sister and a brother. And we were blessed with four sons, two of them having passed away during their adolescence in a car accident. Throughout, our 36 years of marriage and extraordinary family experiences. We have been presented with the multiple situations in which we, were, we have experienced the mercy of law of God. The merciful love of Jesus Christ through our parents, brothers, friends, and priests, and in the same way, we have been able to help and accompany them in a different situation in their lives. We were educated by our Catholic parents who taught us moral principles and values, but above all, the love of God and the joy of living in a happy, numerous family. Sometimes with shortcomings and limitations, but always full of learning and love. We met when we were 17 years old, and five years later, we got married. Thus starting a very dynamic path of growth and fulfillment, with opens to life, but also with difficult and very painful moments. We have had the opportunity to accompany other marriages that have gone through difficult situations, but always clear in our minds that the marriage is an invisible sacrament. From the beginning of our marriage, we had our eyes on Jesus Christ, trying to transmit the faith to our children, fulfilling the sacraments, and attending the Eucharistic celebrations, always together as a family. It was August 2003, when we faced the most painful event in our lives, a car accident where our four children were traveling and in which two of them died. This event would be greatest test of faith and trust in Jesus Christ. At first, we thought that our life was over that we would not be able to bear the pain. But thanks God, 
to our family, friends, priests, and above all the immense mercy of God, who welcomed us with our fragility and we abandoned ourselves in their dives arms. All this helped us in even this tragic event. And with that uh, mercy of Jesus, we see that our children never lost their faith. Sometimes we bend our knees and crying in front of the cross, we beg Jesus to help us to go, uh, to feel fine and to be happy with our, uh, with our uh, children. It was difficult, it's, it was hard, but we say, if our children are happy, we have to be happy. They have a very young heart, and they still have a long way to live. That's why we began a new stage in our lives. Recover the joy and the happiness of our marriage alongside our children and our family, but above all, with a fixed gaze on the love of Christ. That is how we decided to participate actively in initiatives, associations, councils, and groups, all related to the defense of the life, marriage, and family. That activism and closeness with some priests and bishops led us, not, led us to participate in the organization of the sixth world meeting of the families that took place in Mexico City in 2009. Afterwards, we became involved in the family pastoral of Mexico and were appointed for six years members of the Pontifical Council for the Families. Just to let you know, derived from this, we learned very much about Mexican families and marriages studies, resulting the highlights the following. Amongst the surveyed people and families, 90.7% believe that family is very important. The 58.1 believe religion is also very important. And the 76.2 believe that family is the main source of support due to love. In most cases, there are happy families derived from a strengthened and united marriage, although they may be economic shortages. No, during, during the last five years, we have been more focused in a participating in a Maus which is a testimonial retreat for conversion and recover the faith and joy in Jesus. And also, I joined a foundation named Accompania, that means Accompania, where I help to other mothers that have suffered the loss of their children to recover the will to live and find happiness and joy with those who still live. We're sure that marriage is a combination of joys and hardships. 
of tensions and rest, of suffering and liberation, of satisfaction and search, of the most of joy. No family is a perfect reality. It requires a gradual maturing of its capacity to love. At this point in time, our two children are happily married. We have four, uh, a four months old grandson, and we can assure that we are a happy family that live in the joy of Jesus and, be a, and we are beloved by Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Muchas you. gracias, Veronica y José Luis. Gracias. De compartir. And now, join me in welcoming from the Philippines, Rosa and Larry. Good morning, everyone. Mabuhay. As a husband and wife, the very essence of married life is our acknowledgement of Jesus, our Savior, as the center of our marriage, of the sacred union to the sacrament of matrimony. We affirm that marriage is a lifetime commitment. The indissolubility of marriage, as written in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 6, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I quote from Amoris Leticia that marital union evoked not only sexual and corporal dimensions, but voluntary self-giving in love and the result of union that to become one flesh. We become committed and truly love each other because it was the Lord that showed us the way to become a true follower of His commandments of loving God and neighbor. In accepting each other with Christ's grace, in I quote from Amoris Leticia, couple promise each other total self-giving, faithfulness, and openness to new life. The nearest neighbor aside from our family is our own spouse, being sensitive to each other's needs and concerns. Marriage is a gift from the Lord, from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. And I quote from Amores Leticia, that the sacrament of marriage, a gift for the sanctification and salvation of the spouses. Mutual belonging of the same relationship between Christ and the church. As a couple, we need to be strong strong foundation in our relationship. We can also be happy serving God through our Christian marriage, our vocation. And I quote from Amolus Leticia, that vocation, a response to specific calling to experience conjugal love as imperfect sign of the love between Christ and the church. We are very thankful and blessed to belong to a religious community for over 20 years now, a charismatic movement for the renewal and strengthening of marriage and family life, the Couples for Christ. Couples for Christ is a united global community of family evangelizers that sets the world on fire 
with the fullness of God's transforming love. This organization is affiliated and has official recognition by the Pontifical Council for the Laity. And throughout 37 years of existence, Couples for Christ has blossomed worldwide. It is now present in all 81 Philippine provinces and dioceses. It has been brought to 163 countries, including Ireland and UK. As a couple, we also encountered challenges and trials in life. But the greatest joy we experience is when our son was born healthy, even a premature baby. The Lord is in total control. The power of prayer and sacraments made us strong spiritually to face difficulties in life. Our son Lorenzo is a miracle baby that survived even while still in her mother's womb. We implore the help and intercession of the Blessed Mother, our rosary prayer and devotion. Amidst problems and stressful events in our lives, we still have this joy to move on because we affirm and acknowledge that God will not forsake us. Due to financial concerns, it was a big decision for my wife deciding to work abroad and to be away in 2005. The separation anxiety as a husband and wife, a parents to our son, was difficult to handle. But after a year, sometime in December of 2006, we are together as one family again, living in one home that brought us so much happiness amidst the coldness of the weather, the winter season, and that is in Lisbon, in Northern Ireland. We resume our service in the Copos for Christ community. We organize and conduct Christian life program in our parish as an entry, entry point to the Copos for Christ. Our life as a Copos for Christ me member strengthen our relationship as we organize and serve in marriage ret enrichment retreats, attended conferences, and regular household prayer meeting as part of our spiritual nourishments. Our involvement and active participation in the community of the Couples for Christ made us realize that as a married couple, our marriage is part of God's plan. Our commitment, our covenant, spiritual and sexual life are all done to give glory to the Lord. We have this unconditional love for each other. We find simple joy amidst hindrances, problems that we encounter in our married and family life. Our home become a source of blessing, enrichment in strength, a place that you encounter God aside from the church. We are enlightened and guided in every decision in our daily lives through our daily scriptural reading. And I quote from Amores Leticia that the Word of God is a source of comfort and companionship of family that experience difficulties and suffering. In those moments that we are faced with problems, we just focus our gaze to Jesus, looking at Him. He sacrifices passion and death to the cross. We find hope and new life in His resurrection. We acknowledge Jesus as the center of our marriage. Our personal relationship in the family are lived out according to Christian values and ways. We are committed to love honor, respect, and serve one another. We find joy and happiness in our service, in our family, community, workplace, in our respected parish in Lisbon. We consider Jesus that bind us together to be strong in our marriage, a constant reminder 
that in our married life, without the Lord, our family will be nothing at all. Jesus is the center for all things we do. From Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14, Let all you do be done in love. Everything that we do, we done it out of our love for Jesus. Our future, our job, our families back home in the Philippines, all that we have, our life, we offer and surrender to God. Our service in the Corpus for Christ, a missionary work that we do for God's glory, serving others, bringing them closer to God, to experience that deep relationship with Him, and to be guided and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mabuhay! God is with us, and God is each and every one of us. I would like to start with, our, with my presentation and sharing with the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. As today we celebrate the Queenship of the Blessed Mother, we honor her for all her intercession in all, all our prayer intentions, most especially for the success of this international event, the gathering of families from different countries. We praise and thank the Lord for our good health, for our safe travel in coming over here. We praise and thank the Lord for all those people who made these things possible. And I would like to honor some important persons in my life aside from the Blessed Mother, who is my grandmother. Before he died at the age of 104, I was able to look after her and tell her that I love her. You know, in our Filipino, Filipino tradition, we look after our elderly. And we are very thankful for this opportunity for me to be able to hug and embrace my grandmother. And another one is for my mother. My mother, who is very prayerful, and he is the one who planted the seed of faith in me, especially the praying of the Holy Rosary. That's why, even though my parents encountered crisis in their married life, my mother had an illness who was not well, but my father didn't give, give up on her. He stayed on his unconditional love, and that's the reason why I'm here in front of you. I was born because of my beloved parents. Even though they are not here in spirit, I honor them. Because our family is very important and there is a gift from the Lord. You know, the happiest and treasured moment in my life is my wedding day. Being married to Larry, my husband, the person I considered God's gift and answered prayer. And it was my mother who interceded for me. And he, she was very happy when I introduced Larry to her. Before she died, she met her. Because we ha I have my discernment for my chosen vocation. You know, we met in the Singles for Christ in our community. And Larry became my destined lifetime prayer partner. And before my mother died, he, she became a handmaid of the Lord. And I was able to accompany her to be more closer to the Lord, reading the scripture, for her to know more about God's love. And I'm really thankful for that moment. You know, the joy we experienced as our love was specially blessed through the sacrament of matrimony, as witnessed and supported by our families, relatives, friends, and colleagues. Our commitment in our marriage to work was possible only with God's grace and mercy. And our prayer life became our strength and inspiration to build a strong and happy marriage. We have this long-term goal, you know, in our marriage, to be faithful in our marriage vows and to have courage in facing the day-to-day -day realities and struggles of family life with Jesus in our side 
that bind us together. You know the symbol of the couples for Christ? There's two rings joined together, and in the middle is Christ. Christ is the one bind us together, and there is the dove, the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us to strengthen our married life. You know, in effect, all Christian formation consists of entering more deeply into the kerygma to bear witness to the gospel of God's love. And each of us is a sign of God's love. Tell the person behind you that he or she is a sign of God's love. Tell them, each of us are good news to the world. We are a source of hope. We are a source of love. And we need to be happy because we are the sign of the joy of love in our family. I am very thankful for this opportunity to share with you our experience and to read the apostolic exhortation of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, about marriage and family life. You know, in our community, we have this family ministry from womb to tomb, from kids for Christ, youth for Christ, singles for Christ, handmaids of the Lord, servants of the Lord, and couples for Christ. And we have Christian life program to strengthen our faith, for us to be able to protect our family. And we need to have this most meaningful, beautiful experience with the Lord to share the good news to other people. Because in Jesus, we claim victory in our human relationship. He is our sure foundation, and we should not be afraid to protect and guard our family. We should not give up on each other. We know all of us are sinners. We need to forgive. We need to give chance to each and every one. In our community, we have this dream. We have this mission, mission of the Couples for Christ. Families in the Holy Spirit renewing the face of the earth. We need to start this mission in our own family. We need to start this so that in our society, there will be peace and harmony. You know, my role as a wife and a mother to our son is not an easy task, but I, I can affirm the joy of love in my heart for the gift of vocation to married life and with the light of faith in Christ. You know, together, we spend time in our family, our prayer time, you know, the grace before meal, going to Sunday Mass, and we enjoy each other's company. And we affirm that the Lord is present us today. Do you believe in that? The Lord, our God, is present. He is in our hearts. He is in everywhere. You know, the mystery of Christian family, you know, the gospel of family in chapter 3 of Amoris Letitia, we can be under, understood only in the light of the Father's infinite love revealed in Christ who gave himself up for our sake and continue to dwell in our midst. We need to place our trust in Jesus. He restores and fulfills God's plan in our families. And I really strongly believe that marriage is a gift from God. Our family is a gift from God. Our Catholic faith is a gift from God. And we need to protect this faith from all the harassment, for all the threats, in these modern times, we need to guard our faith, to stand firm in our faith. You know, as husband and wife, we need to have effective communication because we are human and we are living an intense life together. We will have to deal with disagreements from time to time. And as an individual, we are not perfect, but we can be flawed, but gifted to have the heart to reach out to listen and to support each other. We need to, uh, to be thankful for the sense of hearing, to listen. As mentioned by St. John Paul in his apostolic exhortation to the family, the catechesis in particular treating conjugal love. He described how the spouses in their mutual love receive the gift of the Spirit of Christ and live their call to holiness. You know, our community life, the congregation, or the group that we belong, they are just vehicle for us, our transport to heaven, 
to holiness. And you know, it was our great joy to witness in our CFC community the miracle of conversion and reunion of couples about to separate. However, with the guidance from the Holy Spirit through the enrichment teachings, their marriage was saved. Thus, we can proclaim with delight the greatness of the Lord in our married life. And this to highlight the indisability of marriage. We need to stand firm to protect our marriage. With God's intelligent love that always accompanies human journey, through grace it heals and transforms hardened hearts. There are instances we brought hurts to our spouse that needs healing. Our hurts can be healed through forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation. The power of the Holy Spirit will help us overcome our hurts and to be open to God's grace, to forgive, and to be at peace. To say please, sorry, and thank you in every situation. I believe that as a couple, we need to take seriously our mutual commitment in God's name in the presence of the church with our faith that makes it possible to accomplish our vocation of committed service to the grace of the sacrament. With this goal, we are inspired to encourage and support those couples with civil marriage to have sacramental marriage in the church, a special blessing to their union. And we had witnessed the joy of love in the church wedding we facilitated first time in the history of CFCNI. Three couples married in St. Anne Church, Belfast, and also in Ireland, we have this ongoing wedding for those with civil marriage. And we have this milestone anniversary we celebrate for how many years that we've been together. In our Couples for Christ mission, we are committed to live in God's righteousness and holiness, evangelizing people through life of love and service. And we work for the renewal of the families that will serve God and build generation of Christian leaders and we shall pursue total Christian liberation through social justice, respect for life, and work with the poor. We acknowledge the God-given gift of community life, and we are always thankful for being His children of light, that all of us are called and chosen to serve God and as modern collabor collaborators of Jesus. We need to be more, embraced more fully through our support and constant prayers to each other with our son, Lorenzo James. From Kids for Christ, he is now Youth for Christ. As we struggle to become more effective in proclaiming the Word of God in word and deed, we need to put up with hardship and we need to rekindle the gift of our community, the Couples for Christ, to fulfill our family ministry. In conclusion, we find true happiness in our commitment to make our marriage work with Jesus as the center of our relationship as husband and wife. And we experience the joy of fatherhood and motherhood. We build our family stronger and joyful as we consider our family a sacred gift with creativity, perseverance, and daily effort in our service with humility for God's glory. We, all, we always pray to God our Father, the source of all our families, to help us to follow the example of the family of Jesus, the covenant of life and fidelity of Joseph and Mary, the holy family of Nazareth. We intercede that every family, despite its weaknesses, can be a, become a light in the darkness of the world from Amores Leticia. The experience of love in family is a perennial source of strength, both family in the church and the society. And as we live in our present times, the only way to pass the joy of love is, is through our personal relationship, our daily encounter with the Blessed Trinity, God our Father who is our divine providence, and His Son Jesus, our divine healer, and the power of the Holy Spirit in marriage, family, and community life that depends on our trust in God and to strengthen our Catholic faith. In conclusion, we need to give importance to the sacrament of Holy Mass and the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. 
And we need to remember that we adore Christ because by His Holy Cross, we are redeemed by His in this world. To God be the glory. Rosa and Larry, thank you very, very much. Boy, I wish we had more time to share with these couples. I'd have a few questions to ask them to expand. But I think in conclusion we can say, after hearing 104 years of experience, not theory, experience, marriage is a path to joy today. I would have been very interested in listening to Mavis and Ron explain a little more about how marriage is a sexual sacrament. From 59 years of marriage, this would have been wonderful. And I'm sure you have a lot to share on that. It would also have been very interesting to listen to Veronica and Jose Luis explain to us a little more on how through tragedy your couple was able to maintain its unity. Many, many couples that go through a trial like you've been split and fight and cannot get over it. It would have been very interesting to hear how you were able to stay together and united and continue growing and end up saying we're still a happy family. Thank you for your witnessing. Last night in the hotel that I'm staying in, at 3 o'clock in the morning, we had a fire alarm. Hundreds of people had to go outside waiting for the fire trucks to come. I know who set the fire. It must have been Larry and Rosa. You're filled with the fire. Fire of the Spirit, fire of the Lord. Thank you for sharing how you have grown to be a Christ-centered couple, family, community. What a joyful witness. Thank you for the fire in your hearts. Let's give them a great hand of applause. Well, like the song goes, it's only just begun. This is the first day of our, of our full day of Congress, of World Meeting of Families. Enjoy your lunch and enjoy the rest of this week. It's been a blessing to share with you. Have a good day. Looking for life-changing entertainment? Does what you see on most channels leave you feeling unfulfilled? Well, look no further. Shalom World TV brings the peace and joy of Jesus Christ to you, whether at home or on the go. To start watching, you don't need antennas, cable connections, or a dish. You probably already have what you need, if you have a smart TV, such as a Samsung, LG, or Panasonic, or if you have one with an Android, Opera, or Roku TV operating system. These can be found on the latest models of Sony, Toshiba, Vizio, Philips, RCA, Sharp Aquos, TCL, Insignia, Element, Hitachi, Vestal, Skyworth, Chang Hong, Konka, and Hisense. You can also watch Shalom TV on most IPTV streaming devices, starting with the fourth generation of Apple TV and Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Mi Box, Amino, Humax, or on TiVo Box through the Opera TV store. Are you a gamer or virtual reality enthusiast? We've got you covered. Shalom World is on Xbox One, Razer Forge, Nvidia Shield, and HoloLens. To start watching, all you have to do is go to the App Store, download Shalom World, and start being fulfilled by content that brings you into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. For more information on how to watch Shalom World on your TVs and devices, visit us at shalomworld.org slash connected TV. Have a smartphone or tablet? 
take Shalom with you wherever you go. Again, by downloading Shalom World from the App Store. If you prefer to watch from your Mac or PC, get the Shalom World desktop app. Or you can always watch from our website, shalomworld.org. And guess what? Shalom World is absolutely free on all of these platforms. Yes, free. There are no download charges and no in-store app purchases required, ever. If you're looking for life-changing entertainment, you found it. It's here, waiting for you on your Shalom World.